So good morning everyone, my name is Jan, I'm from the University of Liverpool. My Lee review paper was entitled Open Cell Porous Metals for Thermal Management, looking at the fluid flow and heat transfer properties. Um, so you may be wondering why we use open cell porous metals instead of closed cell porous metals. Um, so just an introduction, there's two types of porous metals, open cell or closed cell porous metals. In closed cell porous metals, the voids or the pores are not connected. Um, they're usually used for thermal insulation. Um, in open cell porous metals, the voids are connected, which means that channels can form um, through the interconnection of the pores. And that means that open cell porous metals have got the ability to, um, that uh, uh, you can actually flow fluid through the open cell porous metals. Um, they're very suitable for thermal management applications, um, such as heat exchangers. So um, in this presentation, we'll look at uh, five different things. The first one, we'll look at the suitability of open cell porous metals for thermal management applications. And um, we'll look at the different manufacturing techniques um, used for, uh, to produce open cell porous metals, um, highlighting the differences between the structures of the as produced um, porous metals. Then we'll look at the effects of the uh, porous structure on the fluid flow and heat transfer. And lastly, we'll look at the current research trends in this area. Okay, so um, porous metals have proven to be very effective solutions for thermal management. This is because um, they have high surface area to volume ratio and they also have superior thermodynamic properties as well as um, they are permeable to fluid flow. Um, so the conductive and convective heat transfer in porous metals um, is influenced by um, the choice of materials as well as the porous structure. Um, so uh, a solid matrix with a very high thermal conductivity and a coolant with a high um, specific heat capacity can be chosen to increase the effectiveness uh, in, um, of the heat transfer performance of porous metals. Um, for the structure, you have the pore morphology such as porosity, pore size, pore distribution, um, the surface area and tortuosity. And this influences the fluid flow within the porous structure. Um, the fluid flow can be described by the permeability and then the um, turbulence as well. Um, uh, in addition, the manufacturing process chosen to produce this porous structure greatly dictates the, um, the structure and resulta resulting structure of the produced uh, porous metal, um, which we will discuss in the following sections. Uh, okay, so um, it was Van Hart in 2001 who developed a system to classify porous metals according to their initial states. So um, metals in their liquid, solid, vapor, and ionic state can be transformed to um, porous metals um, using different processes. So uh, metals in their liquid state can be transformed to porous metals either using solid gas eutectic solidifi uh, solidification, and powder metallurgy, investment casting, space holder casting, and uh, osprey process. Um, as you can see from the figures, the pore morphologies and pore structure are different um, uh, if you compare them. Um, also, the uh, achievable porosity range uh, differs between processes. Um, each process also have um, their own advantages and disadvantages. So depending on your intended application, um, there should be a process suitable for it. Um, so for example, uh, solid gas eutectic solidification, um, one advantage of it is that you can produce uh, porous metals with directional pores, which none of these processes uh, are able to do. Um, on the other hand, osprey process, you're able to modify the porous metals properties. Uh, okay, so metals in their solid state can be transformed to porous metals um, through either sintering of metal powders, uh, slurry foaming, um, space holder fillers, and uh, sintering of metallic hollow structures. So similar to the liquid state, um, the pore morphology are very different, um, achievable porosity range are also very different, and they each have their own advantages and disadvantages. And then lastly, um, metals in their vapor state can be transformed to porous metals by uh, vapor deposition. And uh, metals in their ionic state can be transformed to porous metals by electro deposition. So um, uh, these two processes are similar in terms that the achievable uh, porosity range are um, 
only at the high porosity uh, area region, which is nine, above 90%. Um, the difference is that the um, initial state used uh, vapor deposition, obviously you use the vapor states of the metal and then electro deposition, ionic um, cathodes and anodes. Um, so just a few remarks regarding uh, those production methods. Um, from uh, literature, it was evident that the structure of the resulting porous metals um, is very unique to the production method chosen. Um, therefore, as a consequence, uh, the properties of this uh, porous structure will be distinctive. Um, so properties such as the thermal properties and the fluid flow will differ from structure to structure. Um, the permeability of a porous metal is one of the um, important properties um, because it uh, greatly influences the uh, heat transfer by convection. So permeability refers to the conductivity of a porous metal with respect to the fluid flow. Um, it is very dependent on the structure of the porous uh, material, for example, its um, porosity, the distribution of the pores and the con uh, connectedness of the pores, as well as the size of the pores. Um, it was in the 18th century when Darcy um, formulated uh, this model, um, which states that the pressure drop is uh, um, uh, proportional to the Darcy velocity Q over A, which is the flow rate divided by the surface area. Um, Darcy's law uh, later on was proved uh, to only be suitable at very low flow rates. Um, so uh, researchers, um, uh, in the 19th century, found that uh, um, at higher flow rates, uh, inertial effects were dominant, um, and that uh, the um, the flow deviates from Darcy's law. Um, so Darcy's law was modified uh, to um, account for the inertial effects, um, which caused that deviation from Darcy's law. Um, so this second term. Um, accounts for the inertial effects, and this um, new model is uh, also known as the Forsheimer's equation or modified Darcy Forsheimer equation. So, in general, fluid flow in porous metals um, follows the Darcy Forsheimer equation, um, even at low flow rates because of the tortuous structure. Um, the pore geometry of the pore structure greatly influenced the fluid flow. So, for example, properties like porosity, pore diameter, um, tortuosity, and specific surface area, they all greatly uh, influence the fluid flow or the permeability of the sample. Um, the porosity, which measures the fluid storage capacity, um, uh, if you increase the porosity, most research, uh, most studies found that you're also increasing the permeability because there's less um, barrier to fluid flow. Uh, fluid flow. Um, with the pore diameter, most studies um, use the average pore size. Um, some studies found that if you increase the pore diameter, um, the permeability increases. Um, this was apparently due to low specific surface area. However, other studies found that when they increase the pore diameter of the pore structure, this led to decrease in the permeability of the sample, and this was um, due to increased tortuosity. Um, so tortuosity is defined as the fluid, uh, uh, describes the fluid flow path. Um, large tortuosity means that the channels um, are windier for fluid flow, which means um, lower permeability. Um, lastly, specific surface area um, is the interstitial uh, surface area of pores per unit volume. Um, increasing the pore diameter usually leads to decrease in specific surface area. So um, most uh, researchers, uh, many researchers attempted to relate the form drag coefficient, um, the C factor, with the permeability as well as the um, uh, uh, pore properties or the pore geometry. Okay. However, it was it is worth noting that the models in the previous slides are only approximations from curve fitting from the experiments. Um, the inconsistencies from those models arises um, from the varying definitions used, as well as the um, difference in the foam structures that were studied. Um, therefore, as a consequence, um, the constants in the relations um, 
differs uh, between dif uh, different fluid flow systems. Okay, so um, we have discussed that um, we have discussed the fluid flow in porous metals. Um, so now we'll look at heat transfer in porous metals. Um, if you can remember from maybe A levels or thermodynamics, there are three mechanisms of heat transfer, um, conduction, convection, and radiation. In uh, porous metals, it's similar. So the mechanisms of heat transfer in porous metals is the conduction through the metal cell walls and through the pores. And there's also radiation through the metal cell walls as well as uh, convection within the pores. Um, conduction it was said to be the most dominant mechanism out of the three. Um, decreasing the porosity um, leads to increased thermal conductivity, which means more efficient heat transfer by thermal conduction. Um, heat radiation uh, was said to only dominate at very high temperatures. So below 500 Kelvin, heat, uh, heat transfer by radiation is negligible. Um, lastly, um, convection within the pores um, is due to increased turbulence and virtuosity. This increases flow mixing and increases um, convective, uh, convective heat transfer. So um, many studies were conducted to investigate the suitability of porous metals for thermal management. Um, here are just uh, some of the results of those studies. So for example, um, heat exchangers with metal foams allied with fluid flow showed 2.5 times greater heat transfer coefficient compared to heat exchangers without porous structures. Um, another study showed superior heat transfer performance um, when compared to conventional thin surfaces at no extra cost. So that means similar uh, material weight as well as similar pressure drop. And then another study showed three times greater heat transfer performance um, when using metal foams compared to microchannel heat sinks at similar pumping power. Um, the enhanced heat transfer for performance uh, was reported to be due to the intrapore mixing, especially at high flow rates and permeability where the flow is turbulent. Um, the heat transfer performance um, was reported to increase with increasing relative density. Uh, and from literature, literature review, it was evident that there exist optimal structural parameters that offers the best heat transfer performance. It was said that at this optimal point, uh, heat transfer um, of the solid and fluid phases, uh, the balance between them is achieved. So knowing that optimal structures um, which offers the best heat transfer performance exists, Current um, research is focused on developing structures um, with designed architecture. It was Bayesian who um, firstly proposed that the uh, architecture of the porous metal can be designed to produce maximal heat density. He said that by doing so, this can lead to optimum flow architecture that will result to maximum heat transfer performance. So therefore, as a consequence, current research is focusing on optimizing the design of the porous structure to maximize the thermal exchange performance. Um, so for example, some studies uh, focus on combining different pore morphologies. So for example, um, Xiao and Zhao um, studied fluid flow in metal foams made of two vertically stacked layers of different porosities. So fluid uh, flows from this side to that side and heat travels down. So they found that the fluid flow um, chooses, chooses preferen preferentially the layer with the higher permeability. They also found that if the high porosity layer was next to the heat source, this gave higher heat transfer coefficient than, it's, uh, than the other way around. This was because um, there's greater uh, flow, um, fluid flow in the high porosity region, which is closer to the heat source. Another example is that by Carpenter and the Silva. Um, so they studied for, uh, force convection in metal foams with graded pore size arranged perpendicular to the fluid flow. So that means that the fluid um, flows this way. Um, so uh, they found that the larger heat transfer coefficient was achieved when the layer with the larger pores was placed by the fluid inlet. And they found that this was similar to that um, uh, studied by Zaragoza and Goodall. 
Um, they explained that this effect was due to the differences in permeability and surface areas. Okay, so lastly, um, last example is that of Un and Kennedy, um, who studied the effects of air gaps in stacked um, forest layers. Uh, they found that um, the pressure drop increased in uh, stacked forest structures, which was due to the additional entrance and exit effects um, due to the additional surfaces. Um, however, the heat transfer performance of this structure is yet to be investigated. Okay, so we've come to the end of my presentation. This is just to summarize. Um, forest metals have proven to be a very effective solution for thermal management applications. The overall heat transfer performance of porous metals is dictated by its structural prom, uh, properties, which is characterized by the manufacturing process chosen. Um, and uh, because of the highly complex morphology of porous metals, this, however, limits the investigation or the analysis of the fluid and thermal transport phenomenon or the properties or models or relations um, linking the properties with the fluid flow and the heat transfer. Um, from literature, it was observed that optimal structure parameters exist. Um, this is when there is a balance between heat transfer by conduction or convection. And um, current research is currently focused on optimizing the design of porous structure um, to maximize the heat exchange performance. Um, I would just like to acknowledge these people. And then um, for a full uh, copy of my references, please uh, have a look at my paper. Thank you very much for listening.